Hey everyone, before I get started, I just want to remind you that if you like my content, hit that like button, subscribe to my channel, and then join the Militiaman and Crew Patreon community by clicking the link in the caption. Hey, good evening everybody. Militiaman and Crew here. We got Ophelia, she just jumped into my arms at the right time. That's kind of crazy, but hey, that's the way it goes. Um, Uh-oh, there's more trouble coming too, it looks like. Hey, listen, we've got a few things that we want to talk about. But first things first, everybody, please know that you guys can get all of our information at www.patreon.com forward slash M-M-A-N-D-C-R-E-W, M-M and Crew. So please do that. And thank you guys again for being with us uh, for all this time. We're seeing some really exciting things that have been happening for, uh, for all of us, not just, um, not just for Iraq, but there's... Uh, the uh, other countries involved in the world. I mean, there, there really is because we all know that um, you know Shia al Sudani went to the uh, came to the United States and back in September and uh, had a lot to say. Uh, he came on good faith, and the, the good faith was from um, the global entities, the largest in the world, that were um, wanting him to do reforms and keep those economic forms going on. So. And he has done that. And it, you're going to see tonight, I'm going to show you something that's uh, not totally correlated, but if you look at some of the timing of things that have been going on, you're going to probably see like, wow, that is kind of interesting um, how it relates to timing and uh, interest in the country. Uh, we know that Iraq has been involved with the UN Assembly savior of the world, no, financial system, but world was my word. Uh, then, then they went into Davo and they had the uh, restore confidence. They had that, right? And restoring confidence to what? With the international financial system, the largest banks in the world, JP Morgan, all that kind of stuff. So the institutions uh, around the world have been paying attention like we have. They aren't very vocal about it. They are becoming more vocal about it. Um, and we have evidence of that. You know, people talk about, oh, we've heard this before, we've heard that before. But uh, to be fair, um, I've got a lot of connections. Uh, a lot of people have a lot of connections. But some of the things that are being said now are coming to fruition are uh, kind of real time. Uh, today, we even had a gentleman kept call me on the phone that uh, spoke about some real time. And uh, interestingly enough, uh, those folks that are used to say that, well, it's, you know, it needs to be, Iraq needs to be off the OFAC list. The Iraq needs to do this, it needs to do that, it'll never happen, all these different things. But when you look at the trajectory, and if you go back in time, like I do a lot of times, and I think you guys all know that I do that sometimes, I might get a little boring once in a while, but the fact remains is, is if you look back into the past and you see the progress, uh, it'll, it'll wake you up a little bit to understand that, that there is pr progress. And we do know that we have progress because we have a lot of uh, barking going on, if you will, from so let's call them the so-called mafias uh, in Iraq, as far as the financial institutions are concerned, um, and to the auctions, the dollar auctions that have been under play. And that's why they've sort of been, I, I would say, ah, my words, under siege when it comes to the United States Federal Reserve Bank and the new SWIFT system and the newer systems that are play, playing a part in uh, the economic reforms of, of Iraq. We're going to see all those things come to fruition and we're going to see that uh, the impact is going to be what? New systems, the Isakata system, the WTO. So when I talked about yesterday, the day before, uh, got a lot of blowback out there from me using the word imminent, right? Um, you guys, I didn't use those words, and I'm going to show you that. That wasn't me talking. I mentioned it. Of course I did. But it's not me telling you. It's, it's they are telling us. There's a big difference to that. So get grounded in your study. Pay attention. Do your research. And start to get caught up because if you truly are an investor, you need to know what you own, and most of you do. It's just that there are still a few out there that just don't seem to want to uh, do the extra mile and research. It doesn't take a lot. 
It really, well, no, it does. <laughs> I'm sorry. It takes a lot of research to do this. But we do make it easier for you to do that in Patreon.com with Militia Man and Crew because you've got collectively tens of years of experience. You got Super Samson, uh, one of the best news hounds that's out there. Um, you've got th those things are at your fingertips. Um, that data comes into our a vibrant Discord chat room where you're welcomed by Gigi, uh, Greg. Uh, you get Samson's news early in the morning. There's some rules. Read them. <laughs> Um, and everybody can get along just fine. It's it's actually a pretty powerful place to be, place to see, and to be able to back up what we read to you guys. So thank, take a listen tonight and see if I have anything that's fresh and new. Um, but I'm going to say this. I, I got some uh, information that I think that some people, um, even I fell, uh, fell into. This is just kind of a sidebar, everybody, because... Um, the gold price today is like 2147. I've been following gold since 1999. Actually, before that, I was in a gold mine in 1994, 95 uh, in the Northwest, and gold was trading somewhere around $400 for the mine to work. That's what it needed, about $400 for gold. Um, but it dipped down in 99 to $275. Um, the good man from Great Britain sold about half their gold. Uh, I think his name was Gordon Brown, just teasing a little bit to the other guys on the pond, but true story. Um, they sold about half their gold in 275 USD an ounce. 2001 and did it again. So I think a lot of the, the gold guys know that. It's what they call a double bottom in trading. And I'm going to show a little bit of a chart because that's something I just kind of got away from from a long period of time. But but when you go back into time, long-term charts really tell dynamics. It Long-term charts will tell you more of a story than short increments like in seconds and minutes. They all have similar patterns because that's just the nature of markets. They do that. Um, the Japanese were really super good about um, uh, documenting that, what they called candlesticks. There's other things, of course, and, and fresher, newer stuff. But they do, they're still relevant to this day, whether people like it or not. But the point is, is that the gold reserves of the United States of America is massive. So when you come to a fear situation where you say that the U.S. dollar is going to be um, having a problem, um, you have to be careful, I think, because uh, after 30 years, um, 25, 30 years of paying attention to, to that particular situ situation, gold, silver, and all that, having worked at a gold mine, um, my view is that, of course, yes, is gold money? Yes, it always has been, always will be. Is it going to be a powerful investment? I think so. It's showing signs of that again today. Why? Because I don't think I've ever seen gold in my lifetime or anybody else has much higher than 2147. It's it, it's showing that there's going to be a change in my view. And once they get to specific lofty levels like where they are and they break out, that's um, uncharted territory. So keep that in mind, everybody. But the United States is said by the uh, World Gold Council to have somewhere around 8,133.5 tons of gold. That's a lot of gold, everybody, okay? And that's just what they're telling us as far as minted, barred, coin, all that. It's not necessarily telling us what the reserves are, the in-ground reserves, probable reserves, proven reserves. There's different names for that stuff. Um, it could be significantly um, or even vastly larger than that. You gotta remember the United States has some of the largest uh, oil deposits, the shale oil deposits, of states that are filthy with oil. They've tapped into that, and I don't know if everybody knows this, but a few months ago, I think that we tapped 13.3 million barrels a day, the United States, and it was just, it's not even talked about on the mainstream media to any effect that it wasn't broadcasted that I, that I caught, but I do know that that's part of it. So keep in mind that, that you know, we have assets, we have some of the huge, massive uh, forests, for instance, wood is a commodity, <laughs> it can be traded. You know, we have agriculture, 
massive. We have some of the biggest, largest watersheds in the world that can grow crops. We can do all these things. The United States has a massive um, economy. We have some structural issues. We have some, um, well, we have some issues. But, but the truth is, is, that, is the United States of America filthy rich with resources? Absolutely. Um, we have technologies that maybe not been tapped into, but I do know that, for instance, inside the area of uh, Anchorage, Alaska, they have some of the largest subutinimous coal reserves on the planet. And we have that technology to be able to produce oil, in my opinion, somewhere around 30 to 40 bucks a barrel. Oil is at like 80, 83, 84 bucks for, for Brent right now. Um, I think even in Basra light is probably even pushing maybe even closer to 90 in Iraq. Um, there's specific blends that cost, that cost more money. So, But keep in mind, I'm back to the 8,135 8, tons of gold. That's over, over twice the next country. And they subsequently drop below that. I don't think I did all the numbers. I, I don't need to, but I'm pretty sure that collectively, if you add them all up, they may not, all the extra countries in the world may not even equal what the United States has in gold alone. And aside from all the other assets the United States has, the point is, is that is the United States dollar going to crash tomorrow night? I don't think so. So keep in mind, our United States of America, a lot of countries have Iraqi dinar. A lot of us here in the United States of America, in Great Britain, and in Canada, Australia, New Zealand, South Africa, Colombia, places in South America. I don't know if there's anybody in Antarctica that's got any, but if they don't, they should. <laughs> so, but the, the thing I'm trying to say is, is that <clears throat> as Petra, our, one of our uh, crew members, has always said, his coin is, you know, all boats rise with the tide. So let's just hypothetically state that the United States has, let's say, you know, uh, five, 10 trillion dinar, right? And we have a national debt of, I don't know, 30 to plus trillion dollars out there. But if, you've, if you're sitting on, I don't know, I'm not sure if I said this, but five to 10 trillion dinar, the United States sitting on that. Um, and if they come back to a previous era, which they say they are going to do, they give numbers. It's not just my numbers, but the news from Iraq and um, their experts and stuff talk about uh, numbers. They talk about $2.80 in the past. They talk about, I think in the IMF document, there's a 198 page uh, document. I think it was printed in 2005. Um, I think I came up with it and found it in probably 2008, 2009 got invested in probably 2010, but that number 322 was, was really a, a pretty foundational number that uh, during the Saddam Hussein era. So if they come back to a, an era like that, so if you think about it, if they had five or 10 trillion dinar, they could probably pay down some debt in the United States, right? But then you have to add, add, add in all that oil I was talking about, add in all those tons and tons of gold more than any other country. All those assets, our, our tourism, for instance, our, our, um, our liquid natural gas, our, our, um, our, our rare earths, um, our farming, all of that is part of the big process. So be careful when the, you, know, you get the fear of the dollar is going to crash overnight. And again, back to the reserves. If in fact they have those reserves and Canada has them and Australia has them and everybody has them, those boats will rise with the tide. Especially because if in fact uh, they do apply a real effective exchange rate to the Iraqi dinar based off their natural resources, not based off a punishment rate from the war era, but and not just based off of oil, Iraq's 322 or 280 was based off primarily oil. Now they have different, it's a different situation. They have um, the ice cutter system. All that money revenue is now not being grafted off to all the criminals, the ones they call the losers today. Do you see that in the news today? They call them losers. They call them the ones that were manipulating the dollar auction and stealing money. Those people are start probably going to be knocking on the door going, you've been stealing from our country. They're not going to probably be too light in the future. It's going to probably have some blowback on them for doing what they did. The deal of the century, the deal of the century, the crime of the century was just public, right? They said because of the ice cutter system, the new electronic 
platform that they're using for all the borders, that massive crime of the century would have never happened. And it will never happen again. They'll make sure of it because of the newer system. Remember all the 13 auditors that we talked about? Those folks, they, they do math. They know the value of the country. The feasibility study that was done in the United States of America, and I think it was done in California, I think I'm 100% on this one, but I know for a fact it was started, the feasibility study on Iraq was in California. That aside, feasibility study is value. Customs valuations, we need to know all that stuff. So when I, when I say what I'm talking about tonight, in gold and all these different things, realize Iraq has a lot of gold for, their, for the size of their country. They have a lot of oil for the size of their country. They have immense value coming from um, religious tourism. They have some of the most ancient cities in the world. So keep that in mind when I started this. Didn't mean to be long-winded, everybody, but, but I had to get this out. The fact remains is, is that uh, be careful on how you think about things. Um, and look, if, if, the, if the American dollar becomes strong because they have foreign reserves, everybody else that has the American dollar gets a boost in strength. And that means China, Japan, everybody, Korea, Europe, they all do. So let's just see how these guys roll and see how this plays out. And again, it's just my observation. It's not cut in stone. I could be wrong. Here, this gentleman he goes by the president of the Federation of Iraqi Chamber of Commerce, um, Abdul Razik Zahiri. He is talking to us about uh, their relationship at the headquarters of um, the uh, European Union, the Bank of Reconstruction and Development. Why are they talking? They're talking about developing the country. They have an agreement. They're going to be talking about moving this country into the next uh, stages. Um, they're basically looking for and may, trying to tell Iraq, um, we're supporting your economy. They're talking about uh, supporting it in many different sectors. We're talking about financial sectors, agriculture, all those things. So, and development, that's one of the biggest things. So when they go to rebuild this development road project, they're gonna be involved. We already know that they've done that. Uh, our uh, economic advisor, ours, or Iraq's economic advisor, uh, Mohammed Saleh, he's the guy that said there's going to be a major announcement back in Janu uh, December of 2023. We haven't seen that yet, but what's he saying today? He's talking about the main reason for implementing the ice cutter system. Uh, well, he's going to say that the border crossings in, in our country have adopted a digital audit and detection system, in addition to the adoption of custom points to completely cover the country's annual imports and these digital systems and procedures, including the adoption of the global system, ice cutter system, which is currently applied, which is currently being used, it sounds like. Um, It'll be, well, it's not only been used here, but it's been uh, around the world in about 100, 100 different countries. And so what, what are they gonna be doing? Um, they're basically sta stating that it, it's gonna be controlling the land, sea, and airports. Um, so that they're gonna have that money flow, the merchandise flow. They're gonna be able to document it, understand it. They know what it's gonna be dominated by, and that's going to be the private sector and it's going to be uh, more closer towards 65% as opposed to 95% oil. So the 65%, it's going to be moving uh, very largely. The next thing I'm going to say is that the communications of the Media Commission delegation, Ali Al Moyad participated in what? The World Bank Global Digital Summit in the United States of America. When? Today and tomorrow. World Bank Digital Transformation, we all talked about that. Who's all involved? International companies. What are they doing? They're accelerating the digital transformation. Who's a part of that? Iraq is. It says a federal Supreme Court in Iraq ruled that the Kurdistan regional government must hand over all oil and non-oil revenues. Again, how are they going to monitor some of that? I think the ice cutter system is going to work. This represents the end of any debate about whether Kurdistan regional government can, can continue to conduct oil sales independently of the federal government state marketing organization, SOMO, right? It says it cannot. So they can't. Done. 
they're, they're reiterating it. This effectively returns all financial control over Kurdistan to the central government in Iraq. So Kurdistan regional government must provide monthly and in-depth accounts for every salary paid by the government at the federal level, to the federal level. We already all know that, but they're reiterating it. So it's, it's like push come to shove right now. It's, it's almost, it's unbelievable. It says the comment from the parliament on the dollar exchange rate, uh, do not listen to the losers. Well, who are those losers? Well, those are the mafia guys. Those are the guys that are taking, that were taking control and stealing the money. It says the government is currently in complete control of the dollar in all its transactions. And there is real and serious work to strengthen the Iraqi dinar. It says the dollar crisis in Iraq is behind corruption mafias with political protection from some influential people and parties that are trying to obstruct economic reforms. So this is a political thing. They go on to say that the politically protected corruption mafias were the primary beneficiaries of the dollar crisis and they work to exasperate the crisis for their own interests and gains. They are also currently working to obstruct any government reforms in the financial and economic sector. Well, we had an article the other day, I didn't cover it, but the truth is they've got names that they are talking about exposing at the highest levels. The crime of the century. They had some high names at the crime of the century. So let's see how, the, see how that plays out. Um, Central Bank is, uh, has a, a ceiling for cash withdrawals for bank cards. This is interesting, and I'll do it as quick as I can. The Central Bank says monthly and daily cash withdrawals for bank cards outside of Iraq. They've changed them. Why? Well, let's see. They say that the cash withdrawals outside of Iraq is 3,000 US dollars or its equivalent in other currencies. And the ceiling for daily cash withdrawals outside Iraq is $500 or its equivalent in other currencies. At, to me, it sounds like they have similar, they have smaller limits now than they had in the past because they were talking about 10,000, um, if I'm not mistaken, in equivalency. It says um, to me that the expectation is to keep these amounts consistent with the international rules that, uh, with respect to how much value in currency equivalency can be attained for monthly and daily cash withdrawals on cards. Um, so if you think about it for a minute, is if you have a card that you can only take 10,000 out on a card and maybe that card has xyz number of other currencies but all of a sudden that currency's value significantly increases um you could be outside the outside the rules so they i think they're basically tamping it down because expectation is change for value in equivalency if iraq changes its its um currency from 1310 to uh something significantly different, uh, people can find themselves in trouble going across borders. And that's probably why they're warning them. I don't know, but we're going to find out. Um, on today, the Association of Banks praises the government's interest in the digital transformation. So all in all, the, bank, the, the bottom line is that the Iraqi Private Banks Association is praising the governments in their digital transformation in all institutions. Uh, uh, international company, Hawaii, um, confirmed that it provides technology services, telecommunications, and digital security companies. Um, basically, what are they talking about here? Uh, one of the basics is the digital transformation in their services is for what? Providing services for the private sector and basically the fundamental issue for the overall changes in digital transformation in Iraq is underway. So we're, we've watched that happening. We're watching the undersecretary um, was talking about the other day. I want to say this, you guys, reminder, right? I didn't say these things. I said them, of course, but I'm going to reiterate it. It says here, the Undersecretary of the Ministry of Commerce, so that's the Ministry of Commerce in Iraq, considered on Tuesday, yesterday, that the issue of Iraq's accession to the World Trade Organization was imminent. So there's that word for you guys. If, you, if it's hard to choke down, sorry, but that's coming from the undersecretary is telling us that. And what did they say? It says all the obstacles that prevented them from doing so uh, at this stage have been removed. So it is just, it is gonna be what it is. And once again, um, Iraq announces it's Iraq announces its imminent accession to the World Trade Organization. I didn't say it other than uh, reiterating it and what their quote is, 
They, uh, the accession will have major repercussions on investors and private sector confidence when his country enters the next sessions of the World Trade Organization. So again, not to beat the dead horse, but the bottom line is it's pretty cool that they, that they did say that and they said that yesterday. They said that yesterday and I repeated it. Um, breaking news this evening, this afternoon. Former U.S. President Bush extends greetings to the Kurdish leader Masoud Barzani. That was today, right? It says, I was honored to see President Bush during my visit to the United States. Prime Minister Barzani wrote in a post on his Facebook. During our conversation, I thanked him for his personal support to the people of the Kurdistan region. Sorry, Kurdistan region and Iraq for liberating Iraq for a brutal dictator and for backing the democratic process. He goes on to say, I also carried out with me the wishes and respects of uh, President Masoud Barzani. He says that President Bush said he prays for the, the well-being of the peoples of Kurdistan region and Iraq. So Bush said that he's praying for both Kurdistan people in Iraq. And to the end of the day, it says today Iraq is far freer than it had been. Okay, it does still have some problems, corruption, devastation, da 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 da, da but that's what everybody's there for. And that's what everybody's there for to redo what? Rebuild, reconstruct the country. That's what we have for this evening. Oh, but I have um, one more thing I want to try to get with you guys is that there is a, a website. Forgive me. Is that, look, there's some stuff that's going on really quickly out in, the, in our markets and everybody's kind of excited about it. Um, it's not anything new. It's something that I've talked to you guys about. It is the uh, Forex Live, okay? Forex Live, there's no correlation or affiliation between Forex.com and ForexLive.com, okay? So I want, I want to be on, on this to tell you guys that that's, that's the case. But here we have, though, um, I put out earlier today in our Discord, there's a lot of intention in interest of this ForexLive.com live chart site. This site is of interest. Okay, it is of interest as the chart is going parabolic. I'll show you that it, parabolic means it's just it's it's going up towards um, vertical it, it, in nature. It's a five year chart. Uh, it does and it is becoming more aware to the public and acknowledging the private bankers are even suggesting that these are institutional people trading doing what they do. Um, it's not public. So do I have proof of it personally? No, but I have evidence that supports it. Um, I'm hearing too, but I personally am just giving you what I know. Um, it says take in the good. I say take in the good and throw out the bad because it could very well be um, something that we just don't quite understand. But the bottom line is it's real. If this chart is truly institutional interest, if it is truly institutional interest, I say if, uh, you'll see that be sure they, they are. So here's a chart that I'm going to show you. It's um, hopefully it's, it's, it's clear enough. But um, interestingly enough, pretty sure that you can see this. this. This dates back to about 2018. Okay, 2018 is when um, some of the data that I showed you guys before um, about printing of issuing of small category notes, right? Okay, so look at the time it goes by. It crescendos up, and I think that's probably about 2022. Everybody thought things were going to be happening, um, and it didn't quite get there. Okay, so we entered into 2023, and that it, it dropped back down, which is right. I think you can see this right in here, right? That part. Well, right in here is right about where Al Sudani showed up in October of 2023. Is that right? I think so. No, October of 2022. Forgive me, 2022. There you go. Right. So now, once he once he gets into office in this area, look what's happened. It's gone parabolic. So if this is in if that is institutional traders, and by the way, if you look up here, it says um, U.S. dollar IQD. Now there is what they call a reciprocal, so it's expression. So you have to understand that this could be inverse. It could be 0.37 or 0.35, right? But keep in mind, we don't know what their expression is going to be. 
So just, I just wanted to share that with you guys. Remember what I said too, is that the, uh, there's a difference between Forex and ForexLive.com, all right? And uh, we're watching for Central Bank of Iraq and we're watching for the Forex International. That's what I'm watching for. That's why we haven't talked about it. Was, was this a, a brand new thing that we didn't have? No, not at all. It's, it's been around for a long time, as you can see. I show you that. So anyway, it's all good, everybody. Thank you for being with us. Um, for all you guys that haven't been with me before, Alicia Man and Crew, we're at patreon.com forward slash MM and Crew. And also here we're going to be on YouTube. So please, um, if you like our content, hit that like button, subscribe. We have PayPal, Venmo, and Zelle uh, to help keep the content flowing. I appreciate your time. Thank you. Once again, guys, don't forget to hit that like button if you like this content. Subscribe to the channel or join us at the Militia Man and Crew Patreon community for even more exclusive content. You can also donate to this channel by hitting the links in the banner to help keep this page up and running. Your generous support is greatly appreciated, as always. Much, much appreciated. Thank you so much and have a great day.